Tell us something, Mr. Bud. All right. Well, this particular video today has two segments because it's two different communities. But interestingly enough, they are almost identical. Um, one is a little place called Lakeside. No lake that we can see. But the other one Don't say they're lying. <laughs> The other one is called Elm Springs. Now, both of these towns find their origins out of the old Homestead Act of 1893. This is when they would approach uh, large publications out east with the promise of cheap land. Uh, and their trick there is that you have to settle on the land and try to prove it, which means raising acres, building a homestead, you know, several different tasks. Um, both of these communities actually were set up on the old stagecoach lines. Now, Lakeside, uh, to give you a basic idea of where it's at, if you go down uh, Interstate 90, uh, which is the main corridor going east to west through South Dakota, uh, you get to a little place that says Blixville on the sign. Well, Lakeside would be directly due north of here, and it was one of about five little communities that they built along this particular stretch of uh, desert road. Um, it had all the earmarks of a regular town, a cemetery, churches, school. Uh, there was even a few stores. And about eight by eight, uh, 160 acre plots of land that all these farmers and ranchers came in to try to build a new town with. Um, some people actually still live out there. Others, you know, they, when they got their land approved, they would sell it off. Others left before they were able to do so. And the state basically recollected those lands and then, you know, sold them to other prospecting ranchers. Uh, some of the ranches are rather large nowadays. Uh, you get some of their two to 3,000 acres at a time. Now, Elm Springs, just like Lakeside, uh, does have a cemetery, does have a church, uh, does have a fire department, and does have a community hall. Uh, interestingly enough, its community hall uh, was established in 1927, uh, and from what I was just reading, they even still have dances to this day. Woo! Um, For the six people that live there. Exactly. Actually, surprisingly enough, they said the population, I don't know how to figure this out, 12. But because of the surrounding area, there's enough people that are in that area to keep the school open. And as we know, in a lot of these places over in Meade County, there were a lot of schools that did not make it. Elm Springs is one of only seven schools in that entire county that is still open and functional. So that's kind of impressive. Um, it's located 30 miles north of Wasta, off of I-90 again. Uh, it's a, it, the great phrase I like to use is quaint. It's a little town, but they take great pride in what they do in this town. Um, you know, everything is still functional. They even still have cell service, which really surprises a lot of us. <laughs> Especially considering how many places we don't have cell service. But it's also, you know, it's basically a strong hub for that part of Bee County. Because to the north, you go up, you've got Badia Springs. Uh, you literally have to go all the way south to get to Wasta. Over to the east, there's the former town of Delzell. More ranches now than anything. Uh, where it used to be Smithville. There's nothing. But they managed to keep this little pocket busy and active and still have people live there. So, but go ahead and check out the videos. Uh, if you do have any history or any questions, go ahead and pop it to us in the chat. We'll see if we can answer for you. Uh, I'm sure he'll find Joe. the answer. Exactly. This is Joe. That's Sue from the Bud Files. Have a good day, folks. Shout out time. Here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. Today's shout out is for a friend pinned on places. And I guess I've always forgot the on. Hmm. I'll have to pay attention. I do tend to pick one or two words out of people's names and uh, use that as my name for them, mostly because I'm lazy and I don't want to write out everybody's name and I apologize. Uh, it's something I should work on. Will it happen? We'll see. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Uh, Pin Places is a brother and sister duo. 
um, who want to create a safe haven for my like, like mind. Oh my goodness, I can read today. Pe uh, travelers and budding photographers. Um, I'm not a photographer. Well, I do take pictures, and I think they're getting better, so maybe I qualify? Let me know. Check out our Instagram. Uh, they are Alisa, A-L-E-S-S-A, -S -S and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that because I'm terrible with names. You guys should know this by now. And Brett, they are from south of England. Um, their goal is to show different cities, countries, counties. Um, so check them out. They have some very beautiful, very beautiful videos. Um, they've gone to some stunning places. Um, so definitely suggest if you are into traveling, uh, if you're into castles or anything like that, um, check them out. Um, on to my next video. All right, house along the street or road of Wixville. You can see there's nothing, 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 nothing. And it helps. We've been by here before um, a couple of times. Joe's finally decided to get out and go close to the house. So I'm following him carefully because he'll Good news is I don't see any cactuses yet. Get some pictures. Get my camera back up. Oh, there's a what? I see that. I see that. tree. Angel has decided to stay in the car. Probably because it's a very windy day. And she's a baby. Ooh, window. Nice. Can't get to that one. I will get to that one when those don't forget to talk to this one. But I'll go peek in this one for now. As you can see, not much left. There's a door on the other side, babes. Oh, cool. Uh, almost a roof. Almost a roof. Wow, this really, this really collapsed in this one. Well, I'm sure you saw that when you were over here. Wow, those nails are almost in the wood. You see that? Yeah, they're... I think it's due to the pressure from the roof collapsing in. It's forcing it out. Yeah, that makes sense. You want to try to go around this way? Or the other way? We can go around this way. Just swing around by the grass area. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Boom. Mm. Some flies. Good sign of spring, I guess. Kind of. Oh, there's a big hole here, bibs. Oh my. I didn't mean the roof, but that works too. But there's a thingy over here. I'm thinking root cellar. Oh wow, you can go in it, babes. Not that I trust myself to go down there, but. Oh, it's definitely a root cellar. Yeah. Ooh wee. Sure <laughs> there ain't no gnomes sitting down there. There's uh, dwarves down there. Ooh. I'm gonna peek in up here. Here. Oh. Oh. 
A little breezy? A little breezy. <laughs> you lion! Oh yeah, you couldn't even go in there. There's not any floor left. Yeah, I see that. There you go. Must have been something in its day, though. here much longer. Alright, I'm gonna put this phone in the pocket. And will you help me down? Yeah. Hang on, I'm gonna pause you guys. And we're back. Safely down. Although I do need to get my camera out. Well I can't get a picture of that window. Can get a little bit closer to this one, but I don't be able to get a real good up close shot because of the bushes. But there you go, guys. This is the house of well, we'll call it Whitfield Road because, well, it's the only house really along the road. Okay, this is on Angel Road. Oh. oh. But Jack actually has no leg. I'm still sad about that. <laughs> Not here. This was probably at one time it was a homestead site that they built. Now, sadly, it's falling into the. Watch those nails. Oh. Yeah. That was a nice little. Yeah, good idea. That was a little walk around. Of an abandoned house. Let's say goodbye. We'll say bye from the Bud Files and we'll catch you at a cemetery. Are you ready? Are you? Second shout out is here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. Our second shout out is for our friends. Exploring with Shane and Kelly. And again, guys, I do take my shout outs. Um, mostly from comments. So if you want one, the secret is leave me a comment. Because then I remember that you came by and supported us. I am forgetful and I will forget that you were there. Unless you're there on a, in our um, premieres a lot. Um, then I will maybe remember you, but I guarantee nothing. Um, hang on a second. I need to get to that page where I can read their description y thing here. All right. Um, so, this, of course, as uh, just very, very simple. I think they're under do, uh, doing themselves, but I'm also really bad at description, so I understand. Shane and Kelly go on adventures trying to find themselves, find out for themselves if the paranormal is real. They have some great, if you are into the paranormal ghost hunting, uh, the Unknown, Exploring, they are great. They do some of the best um, um, paranormal, like, uh, spirit box sessions. They've gotten some great responses, so check them out. They are great, very supportive, very awesome couple. Um, so maybe share, like, share, comment, and let them know we sent you. Um, and that is it. But don't forget to follow us on all of our social medias. Support is important. Have a good day. All right, now try it. Now try it. This is Joe from the Buzz Files, the bearded one. Now, we are in a, <laughs> this is a almost small town. It's not quite smaller than, you know, Ralph and a couple of the other ones we've been to, but Elm Springs here has a, a decent uh, year-round population, so it qualifies as a town, has a fire department. Behind it is a church that has now been turned into a community hall, which is kind of neat. They uh, 
make use of buildings that are already presently standing and, and uh, use them for further purpose. And we're going to go down and circle through the main part of town. And it's, uh, it would look like a lot of the inhabitants are presently at church, which, you know, is good. And then, uh, We'll Which take is weird, considering with, it's almost 3 o'clock. Yeah, I don't know if everybody's having banquets today. We saw the same deal uh, further down the road out of, uh, by the Lakeside Church. There was a bunch of cars and it was only two. So, I'm not sure what's going on today, but it looks interesting. Now, this big blue building here, we think at one time this was both a general store and maybe even a small restaurant. It's now a private residence. Um, it has a pretty decent parking space around it, and of course that there's a green building right next to it, which I do believe at one time was either a mechanics building, a shop at one time, as you can see there's an RV borrowing it, uh, there's three bays, and then there's this big gray one that uh, probably is part of the highway services company, and you can see a lot of semis uh, still come through here and park. Uh, this intersection up here is kind of uh, key to the area because up this road here you have what used to be Dalzell, still stands. Uh, it's basically a town in one block because there's three large structures and you can see maybe 20 cars around it. So apparently it's kind of like the hub of a farming neighborhood. Um, Elm Springs Road of course goes this way. Back this way, if you went this way, would be Benita Springs and eventually it could lead all the way over to uh, Hereford, the Hereford. Uh, uh, new Underwood Road. Little sign here, uh, please turn radio on, use headlights, marker lights, seat belts, and other safety equipment. Your family is expecting you home. Good roadside, uh, roadside uh, safety tip there. Think safety. Don't want to. Don't want to. No. No. I am leaning towards the thought that this probably was patient at one time. Definitely an auto center. Uh, has a single bay, so they probably did repair work here. Uh, as you can see, it is now <laughs> wide open. Wide open. But, uh, wide open spaces. Wide open spaces. And uh, get a quick snapshot of the birds that were flying in and out. There we go. But you can see where it looks like there might have been shelves in there at one time, a door on the one side, and of course where the garage door used to be. Next to it, and this is one of the, the things that did strike me as funny, this is an actual functioning school. Now, this town has no grocery store, no gas stations, doesn't even have a city hall from what I saw, but it has a running and working school. Now, granted, you know, you not only have the people that live in Elm Springs, but you also have, you know, the farmers and ranchers that live around here that need some place to send their kids to school. Uh, outside of Elm Springs, I think the nearest town would probably be up on 34, which would be Union Center. Um, and it no longer has a school. Uh, I don't think White Owl has one. You might even have to look at uh, Marcus or an independent school. But this one is fully funded and uh, is through the system out of Sturgis, South Dakota, because we are in Meade County. But it's kind of cool that they actually still kept this school open when uh, they were trying to close down all these rural schools and force kids to drive, you know, 40 miles one way to go to school. One thing I hate about small towns. Yeah, it, it's a long distance. They're limited, especially. limited, limited. Yeah, because this is in the middle of the, uh, what we call the, the empty quarter, because uh, you can basically go between I-90 and North. Uh, there is one school at Wall, which is in Pennington County, and then there's also a southern school, and if I remember right, I think it's called Red School 2, that I'm trying to Very find Very creative out if, name. Yes. Trying to find out if it's inside Meade County or if it's still inside Pennington County. I'll have to do my research on that and uh, we'll do a little admin on the uh, notes for this particular video. Coming up here, we have the church and it's, like we said, it's still in session. There's a truck driving by really fast. Oh, it's a baby car. Oh, I see that. Right. And they wave. Well, at least they're friendly, but they don't yeah. know what the speed limit is. This is kind of traditional out here in the countryside, you know, most folks, you know, just going from point A to point B, and uh, this is a, a really neat cemetery. We've been here one and a half times. We were only able to videotape half of it the second time because, uh, well, 
one of the farmers decided to come in and try to save my wife from cacti. <laughs> yes, he was spraying as I was being attacked. But, uh, yeah, and see, also when you think back to the early 1900s, there were a lot of other towns up here that were both, you know, starting to thrive, starting to work. Um, up here there's a road that goes to Smithville, and uh, the interesting part about it was when they originally were trying to get post office service up at Red Owl, people would have to ride on horseback every day from Red Owl down to Smithville and back for a year to prove that it was a viable route. And it, I think they're more patient and determined uh, yeah. than I am. Yeah, because I mean, I'm stubborn, but I'm also not stupid, wasting my time. Yeah, that's like 25 miles uh, one way and then 25 miles back, carrying the mail yourself. Other than you know, trust you must have really phone. wanted that mail. That's all really I can really say. The mail, yeah, let the people out on the east coast. I don't want my ride. bills that badly. No, no. <laughs> why didn't you? Why didn't you pay your bill? I couldn't find it. They couldn't find me. Old uh, tractor wheel there. I see that. Here comes another pickup uh, eyeballing up the. I see that road. too. And then we also saw earlier, uh, before we turned the video on, there is an old schoolhouse over here off the Smithville Road. And I'm not sure what uh, school that was part of, but now we're starting to head. Uh, oh, it's a van van. Yes, van van. Now we're starting to head back down towards Wasta. We're going to see if we can locate the St. Paul Cemetery, uh, little tiny one off of one of the main, major roads leading north from uh, Quid. And then uh, we will let you guys know when we get there. This is Joe. That's Sue. That's the goose is back there. And for the Bud Files, have a good one. Bye-bye.